Hello everyone, this is Adam Morris with LoneStarBall.com and I'm checking in with you with the very latest Texas Rangers video update. Well, the last time I did one of these video updates, I explained at great length about how the Rangers really didn't need Roy Oswalt, that he wouldn't get good a fit, and despite all the talk about Roy Oswalt coming to Texas, unless somebody got hurt, it just wasn't going to happen. Well, then Neftali Feliz got hurt. Um, and so here we are uh, about a week later and I'm sitting here talking about how the Rangers have just signed Roy Oswald to was apparently a one-year deal for what will pay him five million dollars and have another million dollars in incentives. Uh, Oswald reportedly is going to pitch uh, this weekend for Round Rock and is hoping within a month to be able to join the Rangers rotation, take the place of Scott Feldman who's been filling in for Feliz while Feliz has been on the disabled list. Yeah, I've, I've really got mixed feelings about this deal. You know, as I said before, I don't see Oswald as a significant upgrade over the established members of the rotation. Um, my feeling was if the Rangers were going to go make a splash for a starting pitcher, they need to go get a Cole Hamels or a Zach Greinke, somebody who could come in and be a legit number one at the top of the rotation in the playoffs. I don't think Oswald at this point in his career is, is, is that guy. He's going to be 35 years old in August. Um, was okay, not great last season, was okay, not great in 2010, or uh, 2009, did have a pretty strong 2010, but you know, at this point in his career, I don't think Oswald is somebody you look at as a legit number one starter. That being said, the Rangers aren't paying him like a legit number one starter. They're paying him basically about half million, or about $5 million for half a season's of work, which works out to about what you pay most middle of the rotation type starters. Uh, there were some rumors that Oswalt wanted more than that, that he was wanting to be paid like a top guy, but that apparently uh, wasn't the case. Uh, you know, one of the other things that has me kind of, I don't know that concerned is the right word, but I find interesting about this is there were reports out there in the media that the Rangers front office was not all of the same mind. Some people really wanted Oswalt, some of them didn't. There's talk about Nolan's history with uh, uh, Oswald and then Mike uh, uh, Mike Maddox working with Oswald when Oswald was in the minors as well. And Carl Rabich had a tweet out there that said that Ryan handled the negotiations himself. He was the one who struck the deal with Oswald, which is interesting because generally it's John Daniels or Thad Levine who does these contract negotiations. The fact that Ryan himself got involved, there's a couple ways of looking at it. Either he overruled the baseball guys and said, I want to bring Oswald in here. I think this is a good thing for the Rangers. Or Ryan felt that his relationship and rapport with Oswald was such that by him working with Oswald directly, he could get Oswald to take less than what Oswald was wanting. Uh, and the Rangers supposedly were offering him less than what several other clubs had on the table. So it could go either way there. Uh, you know, the other thing that's out there is this does not bode well for those of, uh, for Neftali Feliz's future as a starting pitcher. Uh, at this point, Feliz is supposed to be back probably sometime in July, but there's not going to be a rotation spot for him unless somebody gets hurt or starts to struggle. Uh, you know, there's some high hopes that Feliz was going to be ready to take, uh, take over as a starter this year and that he was primed to possibly be, at some point in the future, a legit top of the rotation starter. You know, he struggled with his command, uh, but ha showed some promise early in the year, but now with this elbow injury, it may be that he's going to be back in the bullpen for good. And while uh, putting Feliz in a playoff bullpen along with Ogondo, Mike Adams, Joe Nathan, Koji Uehara, Robbie Ross, uh, potentially Matt Harrison, if Harrison gets bumped from the playoff rotation, while well, that gives you a very deep playoff bullpen, it still is concerning for those of us who are hoping to see Neftali Feliz have some success as a starter and have a future as a starter. So, you know, the other thing that has you a bit, you know, at least some concern there is the idea that, you know, $5 million is being spent on Rose, Rory Oswald. It's not going to sink the organization, even if Oswald doesn't work out. It's not that huge a deal, but, you know, any money that's spent on Oswald is money you can't apply towards a Josh Hamilton contract extension, towards a Mike Napoli extension, uh, towards re-signing Mike Adams, towards bringing Colby Lewis or some other starting pitcher in here back. You know, I just wonder if this is the best use of resources. I think the Rangers have a comfortable enough lead in the AL West. I don't think that the difference between Scott Feldman and Roy Oswald is going to impact the playoff race. I just don't know that Roy O is really somebody who's going to be a difference maker in the playoffs or even necessarily going to be in the playoff rotation. So I just wonder if this is, this is just a really expensive insurance policy in case something happens to somebody else in the rotation. 
in any case, we'll find out soon enough. In uh, about 30 days, Roy Oswalt will probably be taking the mound for the Rangers, if not in less than that. There's been some suggestions it may be as early as June 20th, but we'll see what happens. And hopefully for us Rangers fans, Roy Oswalt will be the guy uh, who was the top of the rotation type pitcher from about five or six years ago and can help the Rangers capture that elusive first World Series title. Anyway, that's all we've got for today's ish edition of, uh, loan, the lo of our Lone Star Ball video updates. Uh, for more news, commentary, discussion of the Texas Rangers, be sure to check out LoneStarBall.com. And for more video updates, be sure to subscribe to the Lone Star Ball YouTube channel.